More than 30,000 Boeing machinists union members will vote today on a contract proposal aimed at ending an ongoing strike. Joining us right now for more on how the saga has impacted the stock is Ron Epstein. He is aerospace and defense analyst at Bank of America Global Research. And Ron, let's talk this through. First of all, you think they are likely to vote yes on this? What was it, 64 percent who voted no last yeah, time? Yeah, I give it, I give it two thirds odds that they pass it. I, that's what I was kind of thinking too. There's, and the reason you think that is because there's so much that this will be in terms of money in the pockets of those. Uh, yeah, they've, they've, they've made some good gains. One, uh, they didn't get a pension. There's about a third of them that want a pension, so it's like that one third that probably won't go for it. So mm -hmm. it's two thirds. Um, and then I mean, this sounds kind of crazy, but. Deer hunting season's over in, in Western Washington State. Thanksgiving's around the corner. Christmas is coming, right? So it's it's been it, a while since they've had a regular paycheck. It's been a while. Yeah. So it, let's let's walk this through in two scenarios. First of yeah. all, on the idea that it doesn't pass, what happens if it fails? What happens to the stock? What does the company do in response? Yeah, so it's fifty million dollars a day while they're on strike. So the strike costs them about a billion and a half dollars per month. So it's a problem for Boeing. Two, for the supply chain, it's a big issue, right? Because you have lower tier suppliers that will really have to start letting people go. Mm -hmm. They have to hire back people later. That becomes very problematic. Each, each month of the strike pushes out the ultimate peak of 737 production by nine months to a year. Wow. So, so right now, you know, we're almost two months of a strike. So if, if anybody thought, say, peak 737 production was going to happen in 2027, now we're almost out to 2029. If it goes on for another month, it pushes it out even farther. Is that a problem for the airlines waiting for these? Sure, and it's a problem for everybody. I mean, you're, you're, think about it. We've gone through, what, three, four summer travel seasons where airlines couldn't get the 737s that they required. This would be yet another summer where we'd have that. So, yeah, it's, it's a huge problem. What happens if they, the, the uh, proposal is approved by the union? That's good. It's good news, right? I mean, it's good news for the stock. It's good news for, for everybody. But there's a lot of work that has to get done to get everything turned back on. But getting everybody back in the factory and working is, I mean, the ultimate solution. How, just in terms of the stock price, how much yeah. good news does, would that be to translate into gains for the stock? How much bad news would be if the stock Yeah, so we, we, we've gone back and looked at many previous strikes. Mm -hmm. And what you tend to see in the two weeks before the strike resolution, the stock outperforms the S&P by about 5 or 6% on average. And then after the strike resolution, it outperforms the S&P by about you know, 2 or 3%. And it does that for a couple of weeks. So you have, you have a nice event, you know, a nice volatility event around the strike resolution. So you would be positioned ahead of this or you would just wait and see because you don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd wait and see. I mean, we're neutral on the shares because there's so much that has to be done. I mean, they're going to burn almost $14 billion of cash this year. Mm -hmm. We think they're going to burn between 3 and $5 billion next year. They'll finally become cash flow positive in 2026. So there's a lot of stuff that has to that has to happen that has to go right. So you think it was strategic to place this vote today uh, ahead of the election tomorrow? I, I don't know, but it seems it like it could be. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, you had Julie Sue involved in, in the mediation, so it, it kind of makes sense that it was. But but I don't know for a fact. Yeah. Uh, but again, your, your biggest thing is wait and see, because yeah. it's going to be too much to, to dig through with all of this. Yeah. What are your ratings or do you, do you rate any of the suppliers or any of the engine Yeah, we've been, we've been uh, very positive on the aftermarket suppliers, particularly the engine suppliers. So, you know, GE Aerospace mm -hmm. is a great example. They're a beneficiary of older airplanes flying for longer because those engines run harder. They need parts. So the market for engine parts has been like on, I mean, literally on fire. 